PR Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a very special live edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young, a special here on the Friday before Labor Day weekend. And we are very excited to have one of the principals, the the grand pooba of the New England Cannabis Convention, Mark Shepard, uh, alongside for this show, or in particular, uh, a week after a very successful New York Cannabis Convention in Albany. Mark Shepard, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me, Jimmy. Always a pleasure. And recapping that show that I happened to attend uh, last week, uh, it was uh, a very, uh, very successful show. I remember uh, a lot of uh, positive vibes coming from the floor, from the after parties. And then even afterwards, when I ran into your staff and yourself, you were very pleased with the turnout there. Yeah, it's it's always a little bit of a crapshoot when you're in a market for the first time. Obviously, that's our first show in New York. Um And, you know, we had high hopes for it. Obviously, it's a big market. It's close to us. And um, it turned out to be the largest first time show for us um, ever. And that's like the 10th market we've gone into. So, you know, when you come out with the highest attendance ever for a first time show, you've got to call it a, a good show. That's New York, right? New York likes to be the biggest, the brightest, the most. You know, it's why it's the number one media uh, center of the world. A lot of people think it's the center of the world because of the financial commitment in in, uh, midtown Manhattan, as it were. Um, But I'm also recognizing that there are some people out there wondering, why didn't you come into the city, Mark? Why go to the capital of New York? I know you have a good answer. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's a very justifiable question, and and many people hit us up with it, but just sort of looking at the history of New York, you know, there's a there's a convention that's been going on in Manhattan since 2015. You know, I've watched it closely and um, it, it literally has not grown in, in seven or eight years. It is what it is. It's fine. But um, it's downtown. So it's it's difficult for the actual people in the industry, the growers, the processors, the, the people that are in the legacy market. It's you know, it's a big deal to have to travel down, go into the city, find lodging, do all that stuff. Um, and there was a second convention there as well um, in February of this year. When I tracked those two conventions, I just, you know, frankly, I said, if, if the attendance of, of those two shows, if all those people come to our show, it, it's still not going to be a good show. I, I need something different. So we looked around and, and it became pretty obvious, like, why not be in the Capitol? Um, and, you know, we reached out to the local groups, the local community leaders, and, and people would seem to be pretty excited about it. So as long as we can fit in Albany, um, we're going to stay there. Uh, you know, Mark, uh, coming off the COVID pandemic and the shutdown of America because of this virus, uh, it affected a lot of specific industries, your, your, your cruise lines, your travel, tourism, uh, restaurants and trade shows completely shut down and you know i know that a lot of people reached out to you during that time and 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 felt bad for what you guys were going through but here you are now and i think we just counted was it 10 shows within the last 12 month period yes and and hopefully i could say never again but um <laughs> to, you know to get back on track just you know just having to to um, you know, execute the shows that you originally signed on 2020, you know, the long story short, the way that worked, it's like, we already paid for the venues and they have our money, money. And they're just like, yeah, pick a new date or lose your money. Um, and we, we really couldn't put everything off for another year and, and start in 2022. So we, you know, we executed four shows in the fourth quarter of 2021, knowing that a lot of them would come right up against early dates in 2022. I mean, we did, Boston in September 21 and March 22, two enormous shows, you know, six months apart, which is, you know, again, hopefully never again. There you go. And and here we are in September of uh, 2022 and coming into a stretch of weeks that I just checked my schedule and there seems to be a convention somewhere in the United States every weekend, every week for the next Four weeks, and I know you have another one. Uh, the this a week from today in Atlantic City. So, uh, are there too many shows going on right now, or is it the excitement on the East Coast of New Jersey and New York getting into the market and developing uh, their following that is so enticing for everybody to kind of get together and meet and show off their wares and their services? 
Well, there are there are too many shows, and, and all of them should go away except for mine. <laughs> no, no. But but you know, just, just you're like, honest, <laughs> right? You know, just just like every other sector, Jimmy, and you know, you know, in in your in in your field, you know, there's there's really no barrier. If I if I want to just say, hey, I'm I'm cannabis news, I can just get a webcam and you know start talking, and now I'm you know now I'm cannabis content, and and really the same holds true in the event industry. You, you know, you, you call up a venue and you re, and you reserve it um, and you call up exhibitors and start saying I'm doing a show. So, you know, we knew coming in when we when we when we first got in, we, we weren't the first. We didn't invent cannabis conventions. Um, and obviously we knew there would be competitors in every market. Um, and you just have to you know, you just have to find your niche and deliver value. But but definitely, um, you know, the, the list of shows, like you said, I mean, from 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 February through the end of June, there's a show every week, and then say from September first right through to MJ Biz in November. Those are the two stretches I track. I think close to eighty shows during those two stretches. Two years from now, it'll be forty. It's just the way it is. Yeah, it it and you go with the flow of the market, right? I mean, if you can do a trade show and there's enough trade to do, yep, you do a show, right? Yeah. And that's, you know, people always say like, oh, why should I do your show instead of this one? And I just say, if you make money at both of them, you should do both of them. You know, and you, you should continue to do every, I tell you, do every show that you get ROI on. I mean, right. why wouldn't you? Exactly. And uh, uh, let, let's preview Atlantic City coming up in uh, the next, uh, in about seven days from now. And uh, I'd like to know, you know, what's on tap. I believe this is, is this your second one? Because I know I was at the one last year. It's actually our third. We we did one in 2019, which was, you know, was really early, but we found, you know, the people were excited. And and these these early ones are, are a lot more about education and meet and greet than actually, you know, signing contracts on the floor. Um, and in many ways, these these are the, the most important shows, certainly for the local businesses. Once once everything's up and running, um, and and the big, you know, the giants of the industry who can come in with cash flow and, and, and setups and can just plop in, it's tough to compete, but, but they're not here yet. You know, you're not, you're not shipping out a hundred thousand dollar extraction equipment and getting a 20 by 20. There's no one to sell to. So this is the time for the local people to meet each other, connect, educate themselves, get a head start on the legislation, on, on the rules of the market and the pathway to success. Um, and that's what we're seeing here in New Jersey coming up in a week from now, we've got our, um, you know, it's our third year. So we've have our most booths. Um, we're up over about 120 exhibitors um, expecting to do close to 3000 attendees. And it'll be very, very highly concentrated with people in New Jersey or doing business in New Jersey. Your philosophy, it goes beyond the B2B model. You've got a B2B element for sure. People go there to do business and meet people, but you also open it up to the public. That's a pretty good strategy for a lot of people because I know you, you'd like to get as many people in there as possible, correct? Yeah, and I, I think, the, again, it's all about developing your niche. And, and, and I believe our niche is that locally focused one and a big piece when you get down and drill down locally is there's still a lot of people, you know, it, it's, it's old hat to you and I, but there's still people every day who are, who are finally making the leap and, and accepting medical marijuana, for instance, as something that, you know, they're, they're now, wow, can this help my dad? Can this help my grandmother? And that educational piece has really fallen away, both, both from an exhibitor and content standpoint at most of the major conventions, you know, frankly, because, it's not where the big money is. It's, it's, it's very easy to just focus your show on rec and go after the big money. And I, I don't blame anybody to, for, for doing that. Um, but I think our niche is to, is to stay on the local market and feed all the, all the local needs. I did notice you snuck in that word old. I just want to tell you, I, I didn't, I did miss misfit that on me. Okay. Um, I do want to tell you though, uh, as, and if people watch, you know, pro cannabis media and we're talking to our subscribers here and remember to like, share, and subscribe to all of our programming content here on pro cannabis media on all our outlets. But I remember walking into the NECAN 2018 March. I had never been to a cannabis forget trade show cannabis advocacy event. I'd never really uh, had that exposure to the industry. I walked in and I looked around and I went, holy blank. 
this is huge. You had like 350 exhibitors. Um, I still have my first sponsor that I met that day. Uh, and God love our friends at uh, Rev Clinics and Deirdre Rovito. Um, I want to ask you now, as you look back at that, uh, how do you set your expectations going into each show? Now, obviously, you can compare first show to first show, but where is that? Where is the market? Is it is it continuing to grow? Has it le leveled off in certain states? How do you view your market in the trade show world and in the different states that are out there now? Well, it's it's a it's a fantastic question for for me, Jimmy, because I'm actually you know a forecasting nerd, and that's really my my passion in in business and what I did in my previous life. Um, you know, in media. And so as, as we got in again, you know, MJ biz started in 2011 and um, you know, most of our competitors started at the same time around as us as, as 2014 and 15. And, and I think the prevailing will, wisdom is that, yeah, every one of these shows, every one of these markets is going to follow a classic bell curve and level off. Like you're going to go from, you know, 2015 in Boston, we were, we were 70 exhibitors at the castle um, with about 1500 um, attendees. In my mind back then, I figured, you know, the, the, the market would mature, everything would fill out, a lot of people wouldn't be looking for vendors anymore. I figured we would peak sometime around 2020, 2021, and then we would find out, you know, just like, say, a car show or a golf show or a RV show, like, what is our long-term show going to look like? Um, an interesting thing, I've seen a lot of shows do that. Um, and and they, they, they either settled into their bell or, their, or they've gone down. But I mean, the original MJ Biz, it's still growing. You know, that's since 2011. And us in Boston, um, you know, we've been there since 2015. Every show has been bigger than the last. And our pre-sale for 2023 tells me that's going to happen. Every, every year, I'm like, okay, that's going to be, that's got to be the peak. Um, and it hasn't happened yet. So um, it will be interesting to see. I just don't know. And you're committed to the Heinz again in Boston? For 2023, it very, very well may be our last year there, um, you know, for size and they're trying to sell it. Um, but, you know, obviously the, you know, the state owns the, the convention center um, over in the seaport. We are in conversations with them, um, you know, and we've got dates for 2024 at both venues. Um, my guesses will be at the BCEC in, in 24. Wow, that's tremendous growth. And uh, geez, that sounds like a breaking news story right now. Anyway, I'm only kidding. Um, Mark, I do want to uh, take a look at one of the posts you made uh, this past week in LinkedIn as you recapped what happened and what was going on in Albany uh, last week. And there were really, I, I found it to be a very enlightening post of five tips about the... Uh, the the ebb and flow of a trade show, right? And and we all anybody who's been to one or two day trade shows or even three day trade shows knows that last day is always a challenge. People are a little burnt out. They're they're eyeing the clock. Perhaps the crowds aren't as as big. I actually think your strategy of opening it to the public helps offset that a little bit. So it's not just the trade on Friday and then the public on Saturday. It works out. It works out pretty well both days. Uh, do you want to go through these or how about I mention number one, you give a comment on it. Sure. We go right down that list. Is that all right? Sure. All right. It says reel them back in, right? Remember to ask booth visitors if they're there for just the day or the whole convention. Expand on that. Yeah, I mean, mo most of the people, if they're in the business, they are going to go both days just, you know, for networking and to, and to meet. And, and the whole thing, if you've been, you, Jimmy, you've done it, you go to a convention, you're, you're very excited, you're getting hundreds of leads, you've got all this stuff, you feel like, you know, everything's going to be great. Um, and then, you know, there's the day you come home, you got to relax, you got to get your, your wits back about you. And then another day later, you start reaching back out to those people, which, which is fine. It's, you know, what people do. Um, but that's what your competitors are doing as well. And if you've got somebody that you talked to early the first day, they were excited about your product, things were good. Um, why not ask them, hey, why don't you come back and we'll continue our com conversation, you know, on the last day. And that's that kind of, you know, hey, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Hey, let's start talking. No, let's do that now. And when we get back to our offices on Monday, we're actually, you know, talking specifics, not the catch up. Gotcha. And it, number two follows right into that. Release the hounds, uh, categorize the, the leads and distribute them to your team because everybody has business development and sales teams on the floor. 
Um, uh, you can expound on that a little bit too. Yeah, I mean, that's and that's something if you're part of a bigger sales team, you know, everybody's collecting the leads. And then if anybody who's been a sales manager, you know, then, then the real fight starts with, no, this is my lead, that's my lead. And, and it's a sales manager's nightmare. You know, everybody wants the hot lead. Everybody has a claim and a stake to it. Um, well, you've got everybody right there in front of you. Let's get all the leads out and let's have that battle right now, again, so that we're not doing it on Monday during sales time. Um, let's just settle that now so we can hit the ground running when we get back to the office. Encourage immediate follow-ups. I'm going to put that one in my I, eyesight, okay? So I see that every day because, yeah. you know. <laughs> and, it's, and, and, you know, the biggest part of that, Jimmy, you know, especially, you know, and I, I sold advertising for a long time. Um, there isn't one good advertising option, but I only have so much money. And sometimes it's first first person asks me for the money gets it. I, I would buy you both if I could afford. So you get those people who aren't there the second day or the third day. You don't have to wait until Monday to email them. You can email them today. And it's, again, all these first ones are like, this is what to do if, you know, if it's slow and you're, and rather than standing around twiddling your thumbs at the booth, just pretend you're, pretend the show's over and you're already home. Right. Just, uh, and I will tell the entire cannabis industry that I'm willing to work within anybody's budget at this point, even the big ones. Okay. Just for the record, not You'll just the little ones. The big money, good for you. That's right. I'll work with anybody because I really, we have enough content for everybody too, I might add. Sure. Hey, this says uh, just roping, tying, and brandom rawhide. Now, I'm old enough to remember rawhide. Okay. okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, you know, I mean, for, for that, I mean, this is, and this is where, you know, when, when I, this, this article is going to be in a, in a series and I, and I, and I attended a, um, a convention on conventions out in Las Vegas earlier this year. And, and one of the sessions I went to was all about, you know, maximizing value, um, especially on that last day. And we did talk about, you know, a lot of people there were not event organizers. They were people that managed, um, you know, their company's trade shows. And, you know, how do you do this? So it was great for me to get insight on, on people talking about what the problems were. And, you know, obviously, if a show's slow, the person who's charged doesn't take, you know, they don't take blame for that. It's my fault. And, and sometimes it is. And that's fine. I, you know, we're more than happy to go over that. But, but what happens here is, you know, people, they, they take on the mode. Okay, it's a little bit slow. Uh, now I'm bored. We've all seen it. You walk by the booth. There's the kid with his head down on his phone. There's the person afraid to make eye contact with anybody because they've had so much rejection. You, there's the person eating in the booth. There's a person that didn't set up their booth because they just want to leave. Um, the reality is people come to the show when it's convenient for them. And, and obviously a lot of people want to get there early. They want to be first to market. Hey, some people can't come to the last day and, and, is exhibitors sometimes won't believe this. And I tell them, come and stand out at registration during the last hour and a half of our show and watch how many people come. This was the only time they could come. They all want a discount, of course. But, you know, they're like, I, could, I only, I'm only here to talk to lighting people. There's five lighting people here. I only need an hour. I'm going to come in the last hour and the last day because it's not crowded. And these, these people are just as important as the person that ran to your booth five minutes after it started. So the competition for them is greater. There's not as many people on the floor. So it just becomes more important to have that sort of winning first impression. You know, that person standing out in front of the booth with a smile, with that sort of friendly gesture. Hey, you know, how you doing? Like I said, there's a fine line between being a starving dog and, and being, a, you know, an assertive, aggressive salesperson. But, but be that person that makes the first contact with each person that when they comes in the aisle, don't, don't let your competitor beat you to them. That's right. And, and finally, visit and bring a buddy. What a great thought. Yeah. And that's, you know, and a lot of that comes and, and, and I see this. It's funny because, I'll, you know, in my role, um, you know, I'm the, I'm the person that people try to sell to, you know, so whether it's lead retrieval equipment, whether it's, you know, a CRM, you know, we buy plenty of things too. And, and so many times I get approached by, you know, an aggressive, good salesperson. They can't answer any of my questions. They, they can answer the, the sizzle questions, but when I just say, okay, well, you know, I use this platform, does yours integrate with it? And, and, and will I be able to do that or need, then they, they just kind of, yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Well, you, you, you could potentially have that person in your booth. You might have someone, your marketing manager or someone from 
um, onboarding right there that can answer the, those questions. Bring them with you. Um, you know, and it's just a nicer atmosphere to have a couple of people um, and different personalities that they might connect with the sale with the you know with the potential customer. You know, um, we've been talking, and we know that most of these trade shows are are a B two B focus. But to me, it's an educational focus, at least equal time. You guys uh, and most trade shows have a, uh, a counter educational breakout rooms and, and different uh, seminars and workshops available to the industry so that even if you are going there to learn, uh, there's plenty of opportunities to do that. How important is that? What might we see uh, back in Atlantic City uh, next week? I mean, especially in the in the less mature markets, I feel like 50 percent of the show is is the programming. Um, you know, you're talking about in the end, the majority of these licenses are going to be gotten by people, you know, who are local. You know, the biggest ones are going to probably be MSOs, but the vast majority are going to be local people. Um, if, if anybody's ever tried to, you know, navigate, say, Massachusetts licensing by themselves online, you know, God love you, you know, good, all the support, but, but you, you, you probably need help. And, and so to be able to come to, to a show like, like Atlantic City, where we're going to have, I think, four, if not five different sessions, all focused on different parts of that process, you know, how to navigate, um, you know, which municipalities are, are, are friendly and, and what are their regs and where you, should you be looking for real estate? You know, here's your list of don't don't even think about this until you've secured this. You know, where do you go in the licensing process? When do you need to hire a professional and what can you navigate by yourself? All of these things, um, you can find those answers on your own um, through days of work, calling people, leaving messages, isn't that? Or you can come to a convention that has all these people in one room and get a month's worth of, of work and answers and networking done in two days. How do people find out, register, and sign up, Mark? Go ahead. Well, NECAN.com is going to be the, the warehouse, you know, right on the homepage. We, we've got a, a link to all of our shows. And then, you, you know, you link to the show you're interested in. And then it's, it's one more click to, to buy tickets, find out what the schedule is, look at the exhibitor list. Um, good stuff. And your next one after Atlantic City is uh, my second home, the great state of Maine. My second home as well. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's, uh, that's a, a great show. That's actually blown up bigger than we thought we actually had to expand that into a second room um so that show's coming up two weeks after and then we're really excited about what um my partner is calling the high lifestyle show in boxborough um oh, coming up gary in, in um my birthday october. which is which is you know the october um columbus day weekend right. and it's going to be the first ever sort of openly advertised and accepted um consumption event in Maine. Obviously, we know consumption happens at events, but it's all, you know, don't ask, don't tell. We're, we've, we've rented out the hotel in Boxborough, and we've got the go ahead. Hey, bring your own gift, trade, sample, whatever you want. Now, this is Gary. So you're, you're partnering with Gary Somers, right? Correct. And uh, do you guys have this comic book thing in common? Is that because uh, I know he's a big collectibles guy and I noticed that's, over your shoulder there. Yeah, that I mean, that's how I originally met Gary. I, you know, I've gone to a ton of his his collect comic and collectible shows over the years. And um, he became interested in the in the cannabis piece and then reached out to me. So, I mean, we've been talking about it for, for six years. And it's now the High Lifestyle Show, October 7th to the 9th, correct? Correct. Yeah. All right, great. Well, we'll be talking about that show as we get closer to it, as well as the Portland Main show coming up in a couple of weeks. But I wish you the best of luck down in Atlantic City next weekend. Fantastic. Thank you again so much, Jimmy. And if you make it through to tomorrow and have a birthday, hey, that's great. <laughs> you know what? I, I live every day as if it is my birthday. So there you go. Mark Shepard from NECAN, thank you so much for joining us. That's going to wrap up this live edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young. And of course, uh, like, share, and subscribe to all the content here on Pro Cannabis Media. I will say this will probably be the last live show we do for a couple of weeks because we like to take two weeks off at the beginning of the summer, two weeks off at the end of the summer, and then two weeks off around the end of the year. That's just our schedule. That's the way we rock here at Pro Cannabis Media. So for everybody, Everybody here at PCM. I'm Jimmy Young. Remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly.
Hey, you want to grow your own plants? Check out Style Lighting's Grow Kit. It has everything you need to become an expert home grower and bring the power of the sun indoors. Style Lighting uses TCP's high-powered commercial LEDs that deliver twice the output in the market. The Grow Kit has a grow bag, a timer, chains to hang the light, and of course the best in the business lighting system by TCP. Check out stylelighting.shop for more information. 